Good morning everybody, it's Friday again, the end of another week, <clears throat> I don't know how many weeks that is now, we've been in, well, in this pandemic kind of mode, um, but it's Fortunate Friday, it's the 10th of July, and what do I mean by fortunate? Well, I'm meaning, I'm focusing on lucky, um, or having, a, um, well, fortunate means lucky or having material success, lots of other things. I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to be focusing on fortunate as meaning lucky in a thankful and non-material way. Trying to be positive in the face of lots of challenges. So first and foremost, we are all fortunate to have frontline workers who put their lives at risk for us. For that, we are thankful. So I think we should affirm, we thank you. Secondly, I'm really fortunate, the most fortunate and luckiest person to have all you wonderful people watching and listening to my videos. This inspires me. It keeps me uplifted and positive. So I am going to affirm now, I am affirming, I thank you. So I often think about what some people say to me um, uh, about how can you think you're fortunate? How can you think you're thankful? Because um, when I, you know, when I lost my beloved son and, uh, you know, what I would give for a hug from him just now, my gorgeous boy. But I'm fortunate that I have my memories. And of course, I decided to focus a, and honour him by living as positive and fruitful a life as I can. Now, I noticed this morning in the news that I think it was some scientific researchers and there was a historic person who were saying that um, we really shouldn't <clears throat> return to shaking hands. Greeting each other, shaking hands is spreading all sorts of viruses and bacteria. Does this mean no more touching? Oh dear. Um, I mean, it may stop the spread of viruses, but what a sad world, I fear. To me, touch is very important. I've often mentioned hugs. Now, if we're never to shake hands again, does that mean there's no more touching, no more hugs? Well, maybe we'll just have to be content with a self-hug. And we'll do a self-hug. We'll go through the motions of that later. As we know, some people haven't been able to hug those they love for uh, during this pandemic. And we know how sad and upsetting this has been for many, especially the grandparents, those who have had to live apart, like the frontline workers. They're just all desperate for a hug. However, maybe all they can do is, or all I can do for them is to remind them that you can give yourself a hug. <clears throat> the warmth of your arms brings energy into your body and makes you feel good. So if we're not going to be touching at all and shaking hands, maybe all we're left to do is to give ourselves a self-hug. Well, better than nothing, I suppose. I don't know what the world holds for us. You see, a hug for even three seconds is has a therapeutic effect of about six times that, is about 20 seconds. A hug releases um, oxytocin called the cuddle hormone sometimes. So you feel relaxed, you feel safe, it calms, it reduces your fears and anxieties. And it's free. So when you're stressed and feeling low, give yourself a hug. <clears throat> so what about hugging other people? A hug also encourages us to be patient and it shows appreciation and acknowledges another person. The benefit is mutual. <clears throat> you feel good and so does the other person. So what happens if we're no longer able to do this? Are we, are, are we going to be frightened to hug people, shake hands in case we spread a virus or bacteria. Oh, I hope it doesn't come to this. I feel it will be a very sad place. <clears throat> we so often need the comfort of a hug. Touch is important as it improves the immune system and it can reduce pain. <clears throat> a story about myself, I've had kind of a sore shoulder, but I do find that it's like a, a Reiki sort of move, um, if you understand what Reiki is, but even touching it and feeling the warmth actually can help the aches and pains and reduces what I'm feeling in the way of pain. And of course, 
Remember, around 70% or even more of our communication is non-verbal. That's your body language, your gestures, your tone of um, a to your tone of voice, your facial expressions. And a hug is a great way to express yourself. And of course, because it has to be appropriate. Um, you can't go around just hugging everybody in the workplace. But, I mean, if I look back to years ago, um, I'm talking like the old day now, but when you would go into work and you were stressed and you were upset, you'd maybe just had a terrible weekend, maybe yourself or maybe with partners or anything had happened. All you wanted to do, you almost went into work for some peace and all you wanted was a cuppa and a shoulder to cry on. And personnel was often there and you'd just go in and say, Maggie or John, oh, I've just had a terrible weekend. And then you'd have a chat and it was kind of all sorted. Now, I think everybody's frightened of this. The HR, Human Resources, which I sadly sometimes call Human Remains, not because of the people, but because they are so bogged under with paperwork now. So if there's even a hint of, I'm not feeling too good, I'm stressed, it's the paperwork comes out and it's all got to be filled out. So it's just the way of things now. So maybe the answer will be, everyone's got to get a pet, because then you can hug your pet. And if you're fortunate enough to have a pet, why not hug it now? Hugging your pet has a soothing effect. I mean, it helps you relax, it lowers your blood pressure, reduces stress and anxiety. And of course, if it's your pet, it probably loves getting these cuddles. But if it's someone else's, always remember to ask permission. You don't want to get bitten or you don't want to frighten them. <clears throat> so just in case... We're not going to be allowed to touch again, shake hands. Sad, sad thing. I don't even want to imagine that. Let's learn how to give yourselves a hug. Now, I've done, I did this before in a previous video, but I'm going to do it again. By mimicking a hug, you give yourself, when you give yourself a hug, you can confuse the brain into thinking it's a hug from someone else. So it's kind of got the same effect. So what you do, and somebody said, somebody posted up the last time I did this, this was a bit creepy, but it really does work. Wrap your arms around yourself to your shoulders or around your tummy area. In fact, feel, feel the warmth of your hands on you. Put some pressure just as if someone's giving you a hug. You can hug yourself like this for as long as you want or need or whenever you want or need. It's now awkward maybe as you're alone, um, you know, well, it's awkward when I'm maybe doing this on live video, but when you're alone, you can, no one else would notice because you're going to be alone. And if you're with someone else, just maybe take yourself somewhere and just like, I need a wee bit of peace just now. And of course, you're in control. You can have as long or as short a hug as you want. Of course, the next best thing might be hug a pillow or a blanket. You know when babies, after they're born, they often get like a comforter. That's their kind of huggy blanket. So if you've got anything there, you might even still have yours. I think the last time I was on, I had my son's teddy. I still have that, so I can hug the teddy. And of course, it's got to, well, to me, it's got to be something soft. Um, it should belong to you again. And if not, ask permission. So if you're maybe in someone else's house and you're getting stressed, go to the bedroom and just hug the pillow. But as I've said, I still have Bruce's teddy and I can hug that. What else am I fortunate for? Well, I can go out in nature and I know it's me and my broken record again, but the power of nature is immense. Get outside, get outside, get the love from nature. If you're feeling low, then being in nature really does help. Lie back, I know you need the grass to be, you know, dry or the sand, but lie back on the grass or the, the ground and close your eyes, touch the grass or the sand. Maybe on holiday you've got your shoes off. That's why we feel so much more positive on holiday, because we're running barefoot on the sand or the grass. 
Of course, when the sun is out, the sun is out today, we've got blue skies and some uh, floaty clouds um, passing by, <clears throat> then it improves your mood. Put sunscreen on, of course, if it's sunny or hot. That's just safety concerns. But hug a tree, hug a tree. Lots of people. I remember um, at one of the Open University residential schools, and actually I see Dave's on, but I've got a mug here with my Open University. We had some fun times on these residential schools. We'll need to try and maybe repeat some of these again. But I remember in Sussex it was at the time, beautiful campus, lovely big trees, and it was a glorious summer. And uh, I found someone sort of beside a tree and they had their hands on it. So I just went down and I thought, right, I'll just join them. So we were hugging a tree. And he said, yes, I love doing this. And I think people, we actually had other people doing it. You might think we were mad, but honestly, the energy you can get from a tree. And of course, you could take yourselves into that Mind Bites video of walking towards the oak tree and imagining yourself sitting and getting the energy from it flowing into your body. Even when it's raining, though, look outside, up at the sky, the clouds. Be thankful of the rain. Some countries don't have enough rain. So we do need rain as well. What else are we fortunate um, for? Well, no one in a way is fortunate in the meaning of lucky all the time. But some people might seem, you might see other people and think, oh, they're luckier than me. You might say to yourself, oh, it's not fair. You could ask yourself, how, you know, why does luck come to them? Well, what I would ask you to do is maybe look at how they view life. They, they look at life in a different way. And it's because of the way they look at life, that they seem to be more fortunate, more lucky. So how can you become more lucky? You can change your mindset. Say to yourself that you can create the life you want, this luck, this inner success and happiness. And you can do it through the ABC, the affirmations, as well, of course, you've got to put in the hard work and have resilience and courage. I mean, one of the one of the stories, I've now got big lorries outside, but hopefully you can still hear me. Um, <clears throat> one small story, and I've told it again and again, is a, I'm lucky or fortunate in getting a parking place every time I want it, no matter where I go. And of course, I get my mindset before I leave to wherever I'm going, that I need the parking place. And I know my grandchildren, they now all see it. Sometimes I'm with negative people and I have to say, look, be quiet. But what I do is I just vi visualise, I imagine creatively in my mind, I've got that parking place. And I call it my parking fairy, could be parking angel, whoever's looking over me. But I'm taking my negative views away and thinking more positively. So positively, um, that parking place appears. And I don't think it has ever failed me. I mean, I had one occasion where I was taking my friend to hospital and we actually took her daughter. Now, my friend's in her 90s and her daughter is obviously, I think, well, maybe in her 60s, I think. But her, my friend who's 90 is very positive. Her daughter is kind of negative. Uh, the glass empty, not even half empty sometimes. And of course, we're driving along, busy hospital, and she said, you'll never get a parking place. You'll never get... And she kept sort of saying this and I said, look... Could you just be quiet? I said it quite forcefully. And she'd be, I said, no, no, just be quiet. So in my mind, and my 90-year-old, her mother, I know, was with me. And she was, maybe she calls it prayer or whatever, but she's saying to herself as well, in our heads, we're saying, parking place, we need a parking place. I have a parking place. So I was using, like, my past tense. We got to the hospital and there was a parking place. But before I could go into it, somebody shot in ahead of me. And of course, the daughter went, you see, I said, no, no, just, just stay calm. And I'm still in my mind going, I have a parking place. And just as I'm thinking this, another car came out and I drove in. And the daughter went, I, I don't know how you do this. And I said, well, it's all about the mind. And, you know, there's, I don't know the scientific research behind it. I don't know. But if it works, why not try it? Now, that's about being optimistic. It's being positive. 
Now you can't control everything, so control what you can and let all the other stuff go. See the challenges as opportunities. Trust your intuition. Now we story here because when things go wrong for me, because people know I'll say, use your intuition, so I'm promoting this. So as soon as something goes wrong, people will often say to me, well, your intuition didn't work there, did it? And of course, it got, got me thinking every time I think, no, it didn't work. Then I think, no, I didn't actually go with my gut. I didn't go with my intuition. I went with my head. So, in fact, it was nothing to do with the intuition not working. It was me not tuning into it. Now, don't ignore logic or your rationale, but tune into your sixth sense instead of ignoring it. Um, another thing you've got to do, of course, is not overanalyze. I think we all do this, you know, what ifs and, you know, research shows that actually if you want to make a really good decision, when you overanalyze, it has a negative effect on that. And you can actually sometimes not even make the best decision. Of course, you also need to have courage. You need to have courage to trust your intuition. Act on your instincts. And if you do it often enough, then you get better at tuning into it. Have the courage to face change as well. Decisions will usually mean change. And of course, many of us, we can all be afraid of change. So when we're afraid of change, we think, oh, I'll just stick with what I know. I'll just stick with what I know. And, um, you know, I don't want to move into unfamiliar territory, you know. So that's when uh, you've got friends going, oh, sometimes they're going, yeah, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Well, just ignore all of that. Tune in. Don't be afraid. You don't know what doing something new and different, what doors that will open up for you, what opportunities and of course, while you're doing all this, rather than thinking of the what if so, I expect good things to happen to you. Now, this might seem airy fairy nonsense, but just remember my parking fairy story, my parking angel. I get it. I get the parking place. And I mean, science in a way is starting to believe this too. You'll have heard of the law of attraction. Well, what you put out you get back. Not always immediately. Maybe not always like my parking fairy when I need it. But I, I have tended to get that. But when you start doing this, you will find that it does happen. When I lost my son, my world changed forever. But I'm using my red door, blue door there. But I was determined to honour it in the only way I knew how. And that was to be thankful that I'd had him in my life thankful that he was out of pain and thankful that I have my memories and of course I have kept his wee teddy so I can hug this at any time. I didn't want his death to determine me or my future. So difficult though it is, no matter what challenges and traumas you face, if you're positive, well all I'm saying is be positive, be the glass full person be innovative, create new ideas, do new things. Doors will open. Now, embrace failure because often when doors open and you're doing something new, you might fail. You will fail probably. I mean, over the years, I have failed at many things and challenges have been difficult. And But I've not quit and I've tried, not every time, but I've tried to learn from the mistakes from the failures. Remember I said this on Courageous Wednesday and I've said it before. We all have setbacks in life. Small ones, huge ones, traumas. Your plans change. Your life changes. But don't quit. Learn from your failures. Learn from your mistakes. I mean, it's. I find that it's my greatest strengths have come from my greatest challenges. You need to, of course, dump negative people. And that can be difficult for some. If you live with a negative person, you need to protect yourself from their negativity. <clears throat> One of the quick ways I often, I, I kind of do, it's like, almost like blocking them. I can bring my hands down and just take a deep breath if somebody's being really negative round about me. 
but, and I've talked about it before, take yourself off to the bathroom. My goodness, this bathroom's been full since this whole pandemic. But it might continue to be that way. And you can go into the bathroom, lock the door, just seconds, and do your ABC. Uh, you know, I know you've heard it before. Um, you might be, of course, I'm hoping that if you've got negative people round about you, that you will be able to influence them by telling them about my ABC in the hope that they will change. But remember, you can't change them. You can only change yourself. They have to want to change. I hope that there's a ripple effect and eventually my ABC will change many lives. Of course, you've got to use your imagination as well. Bring, build your mental and emotional strength through your imagination. You might remember the poem I said in a previous video, video and I'm going to just read that out to you again. I've got to look now at my bit of paper here. And it's quite emotional, so I'm just going to take time. I had a plan for my life. I thought it was okay. But the unexpected happened and my plan was not the way. So I have to plan something different, something new. It may not be as nice, as challenging it will be. There will be many thorns and briars on the path I tread. But smile I will as I know this will help me along with less dread. Don't be afraid to journey alone, as new friends you will find along the way. Move with strength and confidence. Welcome positive people and energy in your life to stay. Now, I don't know who wrote that program that poem but it kind of hits home to me as you can probably tell from my voice took a lot of my red door blue door in my mind there to keep myself sort of on track it's a fabulous poem <clears throat> finally I feel myself very fortunate that this time has enabled me to spread the positive word about my ABC techniques, especially my Mind Bites mindfulness meditations, so that you can use them to change your mindset, realise your true potential and create the life you want. So the affirmations for today, as you breathe, deep, use the deep breathing again from the tummy, the diaphragm, as you breathe in, your tummy should go out, as you exhale, your tummy in. So while you're breathing, say the affirmations. Now make up your own if you want, but for today, some of them could be, I am fortunate, I am grateful, I am thankful. Now, I was thinking about um, what, what a oh in fact i don't know what kind of meditation we thought of today i was thinking that we could maybe do a floating feather um i thought about this one because of my gorgeous boy bruce i love a floating feather and i was looking around there to see if there's any some of oh, something gives me a sign but a floating feather often floats down on me no matter where i am and this to me is just him saying, I'm here, I'm okay. So this Mind Bites, med Mind Bites Meditation, it's very effective to help you focus and concentrate. And it gives you time to be thankful and fortunate and be grateful for what you have. So if we just want to take a deep breath in, close our eyes and take a deep breath in through the nose. Hold, and then exhale through the mouth. Take another deep breath in through the nose. Hold, and then exhale. Now imagine yourself looking upwards at a clear blue sky. White clouds are floating by. Now imagine out of the sky a 
floating feather gently falls. You watch as it floats gently down. You can feel its lightness. You notice the whiteness, the purity of the feather. You feel free. You notice every frond. You feel as if you can touch this feather. You feel a sense of lightness, a sense of freedom. You feel as if you can touch the feathers so soft. If you have a loved one, feel as if you can Feel them all around you. Let the feather settle and look at it again and admire its beauty. Each feather, the fronds of each feather, beautiful, white, pure, light. You feel loved, you feel positive energy all around you. Now say to yourself, I am thankful, I am grateful, I have nature all around me, I feel secure, I feel free. I know I can face challenges with courage and resilience. Now open your eyes and just say again to yourself, I am fortunate, I am grateful. I know I can face challenges with positive mind. I hope you've enjoyed that. I think that <clears throat> self hugs might be the way forward or the virtual hugs. I want to, I will be doing a self hug later. I hope you all do that as well. And virtual hugs are maybe the way forward. So it's virtual hugs to everybody. I mean them when you mean something, then it will touch all of you. And of course, remember, a smile costs you nothing. And I must thank Dave today that posted up a lovely sayings what laughter does so laughter is the best medicine and thank you for your post Dave always seems to know what's in my head before I see it so thank you very much for that I think there's a true connection sometimes that we have with certain people and it's wonderful to have that so I thank you all I am fortunate to have all of you listen and watch thank you very much and have a fabulous day I will be back. I don't do them at the weekend. Have a great weekend and I will be back on Monday at 10. I don't have a topic yet. So if you do want me to talk about something particular, please post or private message me. Now have a fabulous Friday and fabulous weekend. Virtual hugs to everybody. Bye. Yep.